to your next lesson in Swift for Beginners. In the last lesson, we went over variables, constants, and statics. And in today's lesson, we are going to be going over types. So we're actually picking up exactly where we left off uh, in the last lesson. So let's actually start by getting rid of all this. So let's select all of this and let's get rid of this and today we're going to be going over types so what is a type so as the name kind of implies it is um an assignment of what type of thing is so sticking with our prior lesson let's create a variable let's call it x and make it equal to three so the type would be whatever the type of thing that's assigned to x is in this case it's an integer right let's make another variable and call it name and let's call it joe so the type in this case of name would be string this would be an integer so i hope this uh, kind of makes it clear a type is the actual kind of really it, it actually just is the type of the variable or constant or static that you're dealing with so now Swift has this powerful language feature called type inferencing. So because we said x equals this number, Swift can infer, rather it can guess that, okay, this is going to be an int, right? x will be an int. And the way we can uh, check if Swift really knows is we can do this type of and put whatever variable in here that we want to check. And if we move over to the right here, um, if it runs, there we go, hopefully we can see the actual type is an int and uh, respectively if we do that for this variable right here uh, once it runs it's a string so this is swift um, under the hood guessing more or less of what the type of these variables are now oftentimes in uh, professional development you'll see something like um, let's say in uh, last name you'll see something like this. So this is an example of a variable called last name, and it's explicitly declared to be a string. So this colon uh, and the thing after here before the equal represents the type that you have explicitly set for this variable to be. So if I come here and try to assign this to like two, our editor will yell at us because we have explicitly said before the equal sign that, hey, this last name is supposed to be a string. So respectively, it should be a string. So um, let's just showcase another example. Let's do let age is going to be an integer and let's make it 22. Um, and now let's do let price and price will be a double, and let's make this 199, and so on and so forth. So that's the basic uh, notion of what a type is, and Swift is a strongly typed language. And what that means is, once one variable has a particular type or a constant has a type, for the duration of the entire app running, that type cannot change. So if this last name is a string, we can't come down here and say, okay, this last, even though it's a variable, we can't come down here and say, this now equals three. It needs to be one thing or the other, right? It needs to be whatever the type is. And you'll see here that it's complaining because last name is expected to be a string. So um, with that being said, let's take on some more examples. So we talked about uh, primitives and uh, objects, right? So a primitive in variables and constants is something like a string or a number or a double and an object can be an instance of a class. So in the prior video we had a person class. So what I want to do here is go over uh, not only how to create types of your classes and objects, uh, but I also want to talk about uh, a couple common types. So as we've seen here, we have the string, very common type. We have a couple different types of number types. So an int is a round number integer, pretty basic uh, math integer. A double 
uh, is a decimal point number with up to two uh, floating points. So uh, integer with a d uh, decimal and two points. And then another common one is float. So this could be, let's say, like height. And someone's height could be, let's say, if we really want to get nitty gritty in like centimeters, we can do like, I don't know, 200, uh, some crazy long number. So this is a floating point. Uh, the type is a float. Uh, of course, we can create our own types. Like we have this person here, so we can say var John is a person. And notice we just signified the type here. We're just explicitly saying that this is the type. And it's important to know that even if we don't include this, this is still correct. Because Swift can infer and guess like, okay, we're creating a person here with these two parentheses. And this thing is a person, therefore John was most likely going to be of type person. Sometimes, professionally, when you're actually working with Swift, you're going to run into situations where you get an error along the lines of uh, ambiguous type. Now, I don't know why Apple couldn't have made the error simpler, but in other words, that's Swift basically yelling at you uh, and saying, hey man, I can't figure out what the type is because you haven't specified it. So in those cases, you might have to explicitly specify after the colon of your variable or constant or even static what the type is going to be before you assign it. So uh, going down common types, so a string, an int, a double, a float. Um, we could have a thing, a variable or a constant that represents like a button. And there is a class, there's a framework included uh, in the Apple libraries called UI kit and for the sake of this video I want to go over kind of just exemplifying types and not really worry about what UI kit is. Um, for a brief summary, UI kit just holds user interface elements. So things like buttons and switches and images and anything user interface related. And I want to exemplify that everything is a type. So let's say we have button one. It's gonna be a button and we're just gonna create a button. So again, we don't need this here per se because Swift can guess. Swift is smart enough to guess like, okay, you're creating a button here, thus it'll most likely be a button. But it's nice to have this um, explicit notation for somebody else who's coming in and reading your code. Also for yourself, um, when you're learning and you're starting off, it helps to really know what the types are and uh, that now later on we can't now say button one equals true. Um, and that brings me to my next type. The next type, which is fairly common, is bool. So I'll say is complete. So bool is a uh, representation of true or false. So imagine you have a variable that's like is complete, or let's say you have, let's say you have an application that's like a bank account application. You want to open an account. You might have a variable in your entire app that is. Uh, that notates if your application is complete. So we have is complete, and it would be of type uh, bool, and initially it's false. And let's say the user now has finished up the application, we can now say it's true. So with this example, um, it's uh, of important note that the type actually only goes in the definition of the variable or constant. Notice we don't put the type here. We don't do something like like that. Right, Swift is going to yell at us and be like, I don't know what this means. So we need to put the type, um, if we're not using type inferencing where Swift will guess, in the definition, and the definition is either your var, let, or static, the name of your thing, your variable, constant, or static, a colon, the type, and then whatever you're assigning it to. So I hope um, that clears up what types are and uh, better explains as we go through what we're using and why we're using them. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next lesson. Please leave a like, some comments below. Uh, feel free to ask for any uh, clarity, help, feedback, suggestions are very much so welcome and encouraged. And I will see you in the next lesson.